which airlines do you think are best positioned to take advantage of this growth in secondary cities? Is it the large national airlines or do you think it's the new low cost airlines? Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, what I want to tell you is a, uh, a small study that we did. If you look at the top 20 city first in uh, Europe or, like, or North America, the US and Canada, in these regions, or 99% of those 20 city firms are connected by at least one data point. 99%? Okay. Um, if you look at and you do the same study in Latin America, in the Caribbean, there is only 43% of those city firms that are served by at least one data point. So it comes back to the fact that uh, there is a lot of potential for growth for that. It's, it's a comparison that, uh, you know, because of the size of Latin America, is not completely, you know, equivalent. But uh, I think there is still a lot of potential for, I, I would not say that uh, low cost or traditional cars, uh, but it's more about the position, the dynamics, and the opportunities that, uh, that this uh, market has. Right. What about transcontinental? Are there certain regions which are growing much faster or there's unmet demand? From Latin America, going from Latin America? Um, if you look at the, the intra-regional intra uh, flows, we see that the, the, the flow that is uh, the largest in terms of passenger is connecting the north to Latin America. So North America to South America? To Latin America. To we Latin we Latin define America. Latin America from Mexico. Okay. So, so that represents almost 90% and that's the biggest flow. Uh, in some cases, a mature flow, and others, you know, in countries, there is still a lot of potential to develop. And there is the other flows. Europe is also reasonably developed. But in these two flows, the percentage of uh, the uh, air, of the market share of the, of the airline domicile in Europe or in North America really is much larger than the Latin America. So what we see is that with the potential of uh, the growth of the middle class in Latin America, more Latin will be able to go out and fly and all that. We forecast that basically from today, 350 million people in the middle class in Latin America, in 20 years, there's going to be like 520 million. Wow. And that is more than double of the middle class in North America. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> there, there is a potential for these Latin Airlines to capture the local traffic going over to, to this city. Right, that's very interesting. Now, of late, We've seen the huge rise of low-cost airlines and ultra-low-cost airlines that have come to the region from Sky to Flight Bondi to, um, in, you know, all over the region there's this new airlines coming up. Do you think this is sustainable or do you think this is just a period of, you know, overcapacity capacity wave? Well, it's, uh, you know, the, the airlines come and go and, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, always opportunities, entrepreneur looking for a niche market and trying to develop. So. Yeah, there is, there is going to be uh, some consolidation sometimes. And, and, you know, for instance, we did a study, uh, and uh, there has been a tremendous consolidation in Latin America over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, 20 years, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we, we look at the number of airlines that 20 years ago were around. There were, I think it was 40% uh, more than the airlines that we have today. But there has been already a good consolidation. Despite newcomers coming in. Yeah, like the highway is being absorbed by LAN and then LAN. Correct. Yeah. But you see airlines that are now have uh, Pan American ambitions. Mm -hmm. uh, like obviously LATAM, like again, Holdings, uh, that they want to expand the, the network to all these countries and be relevant. But we are seeing the same uh, starting from uh, low cost countries like Volaris, mm -hmm. uh, you know, starting operating in Costa Rica or, uh, you know, some other airlines that are starting to, to move from Colombia to Peru, or from Chile to Peru, or from Chile to Argentina. So, so you start seeing this spread out. It's true that the, uh, there is a big difference between the facilities that uh, a low-cost carrier or a normal airline can go from one country to another mm -hmm. in Europe, because it's, it's a common airspace yeah. and all that. But, uh, it's homogeneous. Here it's not. Yeah. So yeah. here there are some still barriers. Yeah. You talked about barriers, of course. What do you see as the biggest risk going forward for the region? Is it political? Is it something else? What's the biggest risk? Um, the risks are inherent to, to, the, to the airline business. And, uh, you, you can name it all. And, uh, you see uh, some fuel price that has been spiking up uh, to uh, foreign chain currencies. 
depreciation. Um, Brazil and Argentina being two good examples. Absolutely. You've got infrastructure issues uh, that uh, will uh, reduce the possibility to continue growing in, in some markets. Um, so I think those challenges are the same for much of every part of the world. Yeah. Um, I, I personally find this region, region a bit puzzling because where you have something like Panama City, you know, growing, developing infrastructure, new airport coming up. But something like Mexico City, which has already built a third of its airport, I think a majority just voted to stop that construction and not build that airport. I'm a bit perplexed why something like that would happen. Yeah, it's, it's, those are political decisions. Yeah. You know, it's uh, what we want at the end is to have the best decision for the countries. And, uh, you know, obviously all the infrastructure that is built to, to foster uh, um, growth and all that is extremely important for the countries. And I think, you know, sometimes uh, the government don't really realize the value and the job creation opportunities of aviation in the countries. It's, it's, a, it's a source of wealth, mm -hmm. it's a source of uh, high paying jobs, or, you know, uh, high value jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, you could see countries like uh, Panama, you know, that is, is, you know, I think one of the, uh, of the muscles for the growth and all that is the connectivity that they've got in Panama City and, and the support that the government gives the local area. So I think that there is a lot of uh, work to be done with governments to make them understand of, uh, the, the, the value of aviation. And also I think that uh, as some of our uh, guys here in the, in the, in the conference were saying is this is a, 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 a business that shouldn't be taxed just for the same thing. Yeah. Tax them and get them money. Yeah, and that's my realization that at least in the region, we've worked in the region for the last six, seven years as well. Aviation is looked at as the cash cow. Cash cow. Yeah. It's a cash cow. You know, let's milk it as much as possible and people will still keep flying. And, you know, everyone from Barbados yeah. to yeah. others are imposing that. that. There is a perception that aviation is only for rich people, for electrified to rich people. But what you see today is that, you know, with the, uh, the first going down, the development of the middle class, aviation is no longer a lesson. It's, it's becoming to be access to more and more people. So the more you tax them, the less the problem. Mm -hmm. So it's easy way to tax it, and, and especially you know it's, when you tax with that money that is okay. Let's tax it to develop mm -hmm. the infrastructure. So sometimes that tax it goes everywhere. Else. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, I think that's what makes this region so exciting. There's so many factors contributing to the success of an airline of someone like Airbus and it's just dynamic and exciting. You've of course recently stepped into this role. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel? What, what's different about you know heading up the whole region? So I think that you know I've been in region for uh, for a long time. You know, it's it's a, a fascinating region. You know it's the, uh, you see in this region that uh, there is people that uh, are the owners of the airline that are on the day-to-day -day business of, uh, of the airline that are really engaged mm -hmm. to develop a country that are committed mm -hmm. personally and financially to this success. And, uh, and that makes uh, a extremely different uh, approach to all of the business because it's it's a yeah. and, and it's their country. And it's their, so that's it's a matter of pride. Yeah, it's you've not got, just a commercial venture. You've got bigger heads. Uh, in, this, in this sector that's been here forever. Mm -hmm. uh, Pedro, Enrique, the owner of the all these guys have been here forever. Yeah. You know, so, so they are you know, vested on the rich guy, personally, mm -hmm. financially, and mm -hmm. all that. And they are in their country, you know, figure out. Yeah. A bit like Stelios when he was heading up East. That's what it reminds me of. 